S&P as well as the Nasdaq have started to rally fiercely ever since inflation came down and that happened last week thursday and friday were very very positive days for the stock market all in all gaining about nine percent on the nasdaq in two days is in and of itself very historical but where do we go from here where is the data going to come from that could derail this rally or push this rally to give us that next leg higher also what is going to be happening this week because we did not have bond trading on friday how is that going to play into what happens with the stock market ladies and gentlemen if you have any stocks in the markets or, or you have any positioning for the upside or the downside you for sure want to watch this video save this video watch it later refresher i don't care what you do but in the meantime hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because that is the one thing that is still free 99 in 2022. Now, let's talk about it, guys. So first things first, as you already know, inflation was a big beat last week. And that's what helped cause this rally because, you know, markets, they were not necessarily expecting inflation to come down at the same way uh, that it did, right? We came in core PCE month over month was 100% better than expectation. So that obviously caused the markets to get very bullish. And we have been like a coiled spring throughout 2022. And we have not gotten any good news in a very, very long time. Like really ever. Like tell me the last thing that was good news in 2022. You got to go back to the rally in August to see uh, inflation better than expectations to actually get a good reaction in the markets. It's been pretty much straight down. So this is a very warranted rally in my personal opinion. And some people like Tom Lee, and, and that's from the Fundstrat uh, directing manager, he's basically saying the S&P could rally another at least 10% from here and get back to that 440 range on the S&P. It would still be down. Let's see. It, it would still be down about uh, about eight percent from the highs uh but that's what some people are starting to talk about so that can be pretty powerful just the expectations of where this market could go and that could help fuel us higher in this next upcoming week but i think a big key that a lot of people are really missing is the bond market the bond market did not trade on friday so how does that affect things? Well, looking back to what happened on Thursday, bond yields dropped 33 basis points. This was, I believe, the single biggest day uh, for bond yields in a very long time, meaning the actual bond prices went up because people started to buy bonds, driving the yield down. And this happened in a huge way. Now, take a look back to June, the last time the markets freaked out because the bond yields you hit a peak of 3.39% and then you fell all the way down to 2.60% in August. And that's what really helped to fuel this rally. And this little leg down, uh, I think you could make a move back down lower on the bond yields. And where I think we could reasonably go around 3.3% to 3.2%. That's kind of what I'm expecting if the markets run with this whole notion that the Fed will not have to raise rates as aggressively. And depending how bonds open tomorrow, that is going to dictate if we're going to have a bullish or bearish market, especially with your NASDAQ stocks. And I think a lot of people that are watching this video are NASDAQ stock investors hopefully you are uh because it, i mean the nasdaq has definitely been the place to be and will continue to be the place to be long into the future as it does fuel innovation and growth now nonetheless if tlt on monday does continue to shoot upwards that is going to mean a very bullish market if tlt does start to make its way back down that is going to be a very negative market and considering bond yields uh or bonds in general were closed on Friday. Uh, it's going to mean tomorrow is going to see a pretty big day in the up or down direction. So I do think tomorrow does have the potential to be a pretty solid day overall. Now, the dollar was still trading on Friday. And what we can see from the dollar is it dropped one and a half percent. It's finally coming down. And really throughout 2022, if you guys take a look at my cursor here, 
This is uh, from January of 2022. Essentially, what we have seen in 2022 is this. Literally, straight up. So this has meant a very negative market. It has meant, fundamentally speaking, challenges or companies are going to be challenged if they're doing business in foreign currencies because the dollar is strengthening so much. The dollar strengthening going up this chart, that is a very negative thing. Well, the dollar has started to roll over because now global investors expect less Fed rate hikes because inflation came down less tightening of monetary policy means the dollar can weaken a bit just like you've seen from covid over here you know the dollar kept going down because we were easing we were buying bonds we were printing money and stimulus right that meant for a very strong market and given where the dollar is at right now and even the the drop that we have seen i think you could still stand to drop you know, down to 27, 24, that would still be another at least 10 to 15% down uh, from here. And that would continue to fuel a very bullish market reaction. So I'll actually go ahead and leave this trend line uh, put up for you guys. Really, I think the trend line should have been put right there. Uh, but nonetheless, you're under that trend line. You've really started to go into a bearish direction in the dollar, which is a very, very positive thing now as far as what the markets are pricing in as far as fed rate hikes 80 percent of markets are expecting a 50 basis point rate hike in december and about 20 percent of markets are expecting a 75 basis point rate hike but keep in mind on december 13th we, we will have the next inflation reading and that will be very very big for expectations on the next rate hike and potentially you're going to hear some people start to say december might be the last rate hike and they might pause for a few and that would obviously send the stock market a lot higher now on monday as far as economic data because keep in mind guys we don't have a lot of economic data like i said in the last video so the things that are really going to derail this rally is going to be economic data when you have a lack of economic data the markets can really do as they please and what you could see uh, for Monday is really nothing. For Tuesday, you have uh, PPI month over month for October. That does not tend to be a major market moving catalyst. It just doesn't. You have a couple Fed speakers, but none of those are voting members. So that will also not be uh, too big. But then you have retail sales on Wednesday at 930 in the morning. If retail sales come in super hot, well, that's going to be a pretty negative thing. If retail sales come in a lot lighter than expected, that's going to be positive because retail sales fuel inflation overall. And then you do have Fed Williams that speaks on Wednesday at, uh, let's see, Fed Williams at 1050 a.m. so after retail sales and then you do have fed waller that does speak at 3 35 p.m as well these are both voting members that will hold a little bit more weight to what is said now on thursday you have ho you, you have housing starts for october sorry building permits preliminary for october as well real estate is obviously very important to uh the economy not just america but the global economy and that has obviously not been very good uh forecasting uh a, a pretty deep recession as of right now you know new mortgages are down 50 60 percent year over year definitely not a positive thing now let's go ahead and take a look at the ortex data for the s p 500 and then we will go ahead and wrap up this video guys so as far as the short interest on the s p 500 that is sitting at about 15 percent so still historically high but not nearly as high as what we have seen in uh 2022 the short interest was close to 20 percent at one point in 2022 and as far as the option activity there is no surprise here that it has been very very bullish about 45,000 orders over the past week worth 6.67 billion dollars positive order value of 74 percent even on friday the positive order order value was 75 percent and you did see almost 9,000 orders placed on the s p 500 and some of these are very bullish like this december 16th 420 call worth about fifty two thousand dollars. another december 16th 420 call worth about a hundred and forty thousand dollars it's been very bullish for the s p 500 and hedge funds are definitely positioning in that same way but overall guys you still have a 
the, the put open interest for this Friday at about 58%. And the call side is sitting at about 42%. So you're still way overweighted to the put side here. And that could also cause uh, another leg up in this rally when you do see those hedge funds get from super short back to a neutral level and potentially to the long side. Because in 2022, there's been so much shorting on the markets. There's been so much selling pressure just to get back to a neutral level, meaning that there's not a lot of short positions on the markets now. Hedge funds have a mix of long and short positions. It's going to take a lot of buying long positions to get to that neutral level. It could take weeks. It could take days. It could take months to get back to a neutral level guys so that is going to be all for this video hit that like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one